Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 10.2, Arithmetic Sequences and Series. An arithmetic sequence for finding the nth term is this formula right here, where a sub n is the final term, a sub 1 is the first term, n is the number of terms, and d is the difference. So you ask yourself, what do we need to know this for? Well, to find the nth term of the arithmetic sequence. Sequences, remember, we're adding up. So let's see if we can plug these numbers into our formula. So a sub 1 is negative 1, so it's negative 1, plus our n is 25, so it's 25 minus 1. Our d is negative 10, just plugging these numbers into this formula. So let's go ahead and solve. We have negative 1 plus 24 times a negative 10. We keep going negative 1 minus 240, and so our and term of this sequence is negative 241. And what term is that? That is the 25th term. So the 25th term of this sequence is negative 241. Now here, let's do the same exact thing. We're looking for the a sub 20 or the 20th term where a sub 1 is going to be 15 plus. Now do we know how many terms we have? Well, if we're looking for the 20th term, we must have 20 terms, so our n is going to be 20 from this guy right there. So it is 20 minus 1, and then our difference is 3. Plugging this in, we have 15 plus 19 times 3. We keep going. 15 plus 57 is going to give us 72. Two. So we read this a sub 20, the a sub 20th term is 72. Now we are asked to write an equation for the nth term of each arithmetic sequence. We want to write an equation like this. Let's go ahead and see what we have. First, we do know we have a sub 1, which is the first number in the sequence, which is negative 8. And we do not know, we do not know how many numbers we have. And finally, our d. What is our d? Well, our d is our difference. How do we get to each term? Well, we add 2 to every single term, so our difference is 2. Now, we use this to write an equation. So we have a sub n that's going to equal, equal the starting value, which was negative 8, plus, we do not know our n, minus 1 from our formula, times 2. Let's distribute this 2. Let's keep going with this. So we have a sub n equals a negative 8 plus 2n minus 2, let's simplify, we have an a sub n equals a 2n, combining the both negative numbers, 2 equal negative 10, so our equation is right here. Jumping to number 4, what do we have to do? Same situation, see what we have. We have an a sub 1 that we do not know. Well, we need our a sub 1 for this formula. So now, what I'm going to do is use this formula to find our a sub 1, and then do exactly what we did over here. So now, I know that my last term is going to be 11, so it's 11. We do not know what our a sub 1 is, plus, now my n, my n, how many terms do we have in this sequence? We have six terms. Right here is our n, so it is 6 minus 1, and then our difference is negative 11. So let's multiply all this stuff through and see if we can find a sub 1. Well, then it's going to be plus 5 times negative 11, and so now we have 11 equals a sub 1 minus 55. We add the 55 over, so 66 equals a sub 1. So now we have our a sub 1. Now we can go ahead and find our formula. So we have a sub n equals formula 66. 66 plus, we do not know how many terms we have because we're looking for the nth term, minus 1. Our difference is still negative 11. So let's clean this up a little bit. a sub n equals 66 plus a negative 11n plus 11. Let's clean it up some more. a sub n equals, I'm just going to make it a negative 11n, and then plus 66 and 11, which is plus 77. So now our equation for the nth term of the sequence is right here. a sub n equals negative 11 plus 77. 
Now we are going to get into some vocab. The arithmetic mean is the terms between any two non-consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence. Well, what does that mean? It is this right here. We are looking for these terms. So we have to use this guy to find our difference because we know what a sub 1 is. a sub 1 is 21. We know our n, which is how many terms do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we know our n is 5, and we do not know our, what our d is, but we do know that a sub n is 45. So let's use what we know. We have 45 equals 21 plus 5 minus 1. We do not know what d is. Let's clean it up a little bit. We have 45 equals 21 plus 4d. Subtract over the 21. We have 24 equals 4d. And so now d equals 6 after we divide. Now it equals 6. That's not the answer. We're looking for the arithmetic means, which are these guys right here. So we add 6 to 21 to come up with 27. Then we add 6 to come up with 33. And we add 6 more to come up with 39. And then we can check our work. Do we add 6 and does it give us 45? Yes, it does. So our arithmetic means are right here. Now with 6. Now we're going to do the same thing, but with words. We're asked to find the five arithmetic means between negative 18 and 36. I'm just going to help set this problem up. What does this problem mean? Here we have negative 18 because we're starting with negative 18. The five arithmetic means are 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. There are five arithmetic means right here, and we're ending with 36. So you would do the exact same thing that you did here, just with this once you write it out. Some more vocab words. First, series. Series is the sum of the terms of a sequence. So sequence, what we were doing the last slide, we're just adding those terms up. Arithmetic series is the indicated sum of the terms of an arithmetic sequence. So what we were doing last slide as well, but now they tell us where we're going, and then we just add them up. A partial sum is the sum of the first n terms of the series. So we pick a point where we're going to, we add them up, we're done. Now we can find these a couple different ways. First way, not the most efficient way, is to find each term and then add them together. It works great if you're only looking for three or four terms. Second way, now when you're given more terms, we have the number of terms divided by two and then the first and last term. Or if you're not given the last term, you can have the number of terms divided by 2, and then we take 2 times the first term, and then we have n minus 1 times the difference. So let's apply this. Here we're asked to find the sum of each series. So we can use our series in order to find the sum. But sometimes, like in number 7, we don't have everything. We don't have our n. We are looking for our n because we need n in both of these because we have two missing variables there and there. So the first thing we have to do is find our n. So let's plug everything in. We have 80 for our last term, so it's going to be 80 equals 8 for our first term plus n, which we don't know, minus 1. And now what's our difference? We are adding 4 to every term, so it's times 4. Four. Let's simplify. Here we have 80 equals 8 plus 4n minus 4. Let's combine. We have 80 equals 4n plus 4. We subtract the 4 over, so it's 76 equals 4n. And now we have 19 terms. But we're not just looking for 19, we're looking for our series. So now I'm going to take this 19 and plug it in for n. So our series equals 19 divided by 2 times our a sub 1 is 8 plus 80. Then we just can start punching it in. Or if you want to, we have 19 halves times 88. And so now our series adds up to be 836 for our answer. With 8, same situation. 
Now, we do not have our a sub 1, right? So with some of this stuff, we have to use one, two, or three formulas to find out what we need and then use our series formulas to plug them in. So now we have our n, but we don't have our last guy. So let's go ahead and find our a sub 1. We have 240 for the last term. a sub 1, we do not know, plus 16, which is the amount of terms we have, then times 8, which is the difference. Keep going. We have 240 equals a sub 1 plus 15 times 8. 240 equals a sub 1 plus 120. So a sub 1 after subtracting the 120 over equals 120. Now we can go ahead and find our s sub n using this guy right here. So we have s sub n equals n, which was 16, over 2. Our a sub 1, which we just found, was 120. Plus our a sub n, which is 240. So we go a sub n equals 8 times 360. And so then s sub n is 2880. This is all those terms added up. We had 16 terms in the sequence. We added them up to find 2880. Now we are asked to find the first three terms of each arithmetic sequence. Well, we do not know. What's one thing we need to know? We do not know what our d is, right? Well, that helps to get to each consecutive term. Well, we do not know what that is. So if we do not know what that is, we can't use this guy. Can we use this guy to find our n? Once we find our n, we'll be able to find our d. So let's go ahead and get started. Using this guy right here, we have 129 equals n over 2 because that's what we're looking for. We do know what our first term is and we know what our last term is. Let's add that up. So we have 129 equals n over 2 times 43. So if we just divide that 43 by 2, we come up with 129 equals 21.5 n divided by 21.5. So 6 equals n. So now we have our n. Let's go ahead and plug it in to find our d. So using 129 again, 129 equals 6, which we just found over 2. And then it's 2 times 14 plus 6 minus 1 times d and close it up. Simplify this. 129 equals 3 times 28 plus 5d. And then now I'm going to just divide by 3 because I'm multiplying by it. So it's 43 equals 28 plus 5d. Subtract the 28. So we have 15 equals 5d. Divide by 5. So now our d is 3. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the first three terms. So 1, 2, 3. My first term is 14, my second term is 17, plus 3 is 20, plus 3 more is 23. Last thing we have is sigma notation. Sigma notation is the sum of a series written shorthand. This is a sigma, Greek letter sigma. What goes in front of it is the formula that we are going to be using. The letter above it is the last value of k. Letter below it is the first value of k. So what do we do with this? We find the sum of each arithmetic series. Now, we would use this for the series, but we do not know some things. We do not know what our a sub 1 is. Our a sub 1 can be found by plugging in that 3 there. So it's going to be 2 times 3 plus 1. So a sub 1 is 7. Next, do we know the last term? No, we don't. So we take the last term and plug it in for k. So it's a sub n equals 2 times 10 plus 1. So a sub n is going to be 21. Finally, do we know what n is? No, we don't. But we know first and last. So we subtract 10 minus 3. But we have to add 1 because we take out. So that's going to be 8. Plug everything in there. So now s sub n equals 8 over 2, then times 7 plus 21. That's going to be s sub n equals 4 times 28. So the series adds up 
to be 122. And that does it. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.